Hi there. Welcome to episode 152 of the Way Back Music Podcast. My name is Chris. And I'm Matt. And we're here to listen to the most interesting video game music there is. This is our second foray into the multi-podcast collaborative effort, Masters of VGM. Last week we covered Chris's picks, mine. <clears throat> and this week we're covering Matt's, mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the Masters of VGM, Volume 2. What's up, Chris? Not much, Matt. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, I decided to have a little fun up front. It's it's fun to to sit back and have somebody else host. Yeah, right. It's a it's a little weird to to host. <laughs> it happens. It happens to me sometimes in this week's episode. Like, uh-huh. I I host a lot of them, but then sometimes I don't, and it's nice to just be like, you know what? I'm gonna sit back and play some video games while you guys <laughs> <laughs> while you guys do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> it's fun. Oh, I would. I guess we should have written something bigger so you could have played some video games. No, no, no. I actually, this is going to, I'm realizing now this is going to run a little bit differently because I don't actually have this music loaded into my iTunes the way I usually do. But that's fine. I'll just, I'll do what you do and just go off the Dropbox. Uh-huh. Oh, wait. <laughs> that reminds me. <laughs> I have to open the Dropbox. <laughs> this is shaping up to be a great episode. Um, yeah, so, so what's been going on? What's what's been happening since I last spoke with you? Oh, nothing good. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's, that's what I love to hear. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, we're we're doing okay. We're hanging in there. I've eaten some really good food this past week. Ooh. Um, and when I say really good, I mean very tasty to me, not like you know high food and good food or anything. Like <laughs> I have I ate a pound of bacon. <laughs> Tasted great. <laughs> I've I've come to learn that I have a really nice appreciate I, I, I've come to learn an appreciation for relish on a hot dog so okay um I personally don't like relish I don't like pickles right that's what relish is right yeah, and that's that's really where it came from because for a while now not even that long but just for maybe the last year or so I've been like you know what I'm gonna throw a pickle on this hot dog because I do like pickles Okay, and I'm like, wow, this is really good. Pickle on a hot dog. Why don't why don't want people do that? And then, like, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, it occurred to me. Well, relish is just ground up pickles, basically. Why don't I try that out? And it is a different experience entirely. Yes. But yes, I have. A, we have a whole bottle of relish in the fridge because my wife used like, I don't know, a tablespoon of it in a recipe. And it's not like yeah. you just go out and buy a tablespoon of relish. I hate um, that. So we have all this relish, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and try this out on my hot dog and see how I feel about it. And it was okay at first, but now now it's really grown on me. And in uh-huh. fact, yesterday, I grilled up a couple of hot dogs for lunch. Um, and I did ketchup, relish, and onions. Because I have uh, an, an onion laying around, so I diced up an onion. And that was really freaking good. In fact, I might do it again for lunch today. You know, I love grilled hot dogs. But oh, I don't... Dude. I, I don't eat them. Like the only time I eat them is summertime, and it's literally like my my checklist for a good summer. Did I attend like three barbecues? How many hot dogs did I have? Like okay, great, perfect. It's been a great summer. You know what I mean? Like there's a, I mean I don't I don't know, Italian ices, right? Like some for for those non city dwelling people. You know, there's a guy, there's a little Spanish guy that goes around, he rings a little bell, and you're like, oh, that's the guy, and you know, you run and you grab him, and, and another checklist for me is like, did you have at least four of them this summer? It's mm. been a great summer then, you know? Oh, um, Italian ice is so good. I've yeah. never understood the term water ice. Water ice? Yeah. Who the hell says that? It's a, it's apparently, it's a Jersey thing. It's, that's what people in New Jersey call Italian ice, but huh. it doesn't make any sense. Um, it's what I'm not. I'm clearly not familiar with it. Like water ice. What is it? What does that mean? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's flavored. It's, so it's, it's, it's flavored ice. Where's the water come in? Like the it, water turned. To, what is water ice? And like this is me from Jersey saying this. It's one of those things I just. It wasn't until I was I, old, past high school that it eventually occurred to me. Like I keep saying water ice. We're gonna get some water ice, and I think, what the hell's water what? ice? <laughs> Who came up with this? That doesn't make any sense. I, I'm. I, we're gonna have to look into this. Yeah. The but really quickly back to the pickles thing. <laughs> just very quickly. 
And I enough say this all pickles. the time. Let's talk no, 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 enough about water ice. Let's talk about pickles. Let's, let's get back to these pickles real quick. S- something that bothers me personally is that I love cucumbers and I love pickled vegetables, but I don't like pickles. And I don't understand it. Well, that's pretty strange. Well, what? Well, I guess the question is, what what kind of pickles? Because this is something I didn't realize as a kid. I didn't like pickles either. I've grown to like them, but I also didn't realize they were like, when you're talking pickles, mm-hmm. there's bread and butter pickles and there's mm-hmm. kosher dill pickles, and they are very different flavors. Um, You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to assume it's dill because I don't like dill. Like I've had, I've, you know, my 42 years I've eaten in many places and, you know, there, dill ends up on something, uh, you know, dill's prevalent in like uh, tzatziki sauce and stuff. And I don't, I'm not a fan. Yeah. And, but it's a, definitely, I'm it's almost definitely the dill. that either. Yeah. But yeah. dill pickles, I don't take, they don't taste like dill to me. They just taste like a different kind of vinegar, but. See, I, I guess love, I've always wondered why uh, they say dill. I think as they are flavored with dill, they must be, but they don't taste like dill smells to me i don't find that connection there with mm-hmm. a good kosher dill pickle pickles yeah. confuse me i don't like cucumbers can't no? stand them. like me some pickles though i'm gonna tell you something really funny you know the wrestler the undertaker not personally but yes well i, I mean if you did i'd be very upset that you didn't tell me <laughs> um apparently it's a it's a locker room not so secret that he hates cucumbers so much that they actually scare him he is, is physically like he's he yes yes he's physically upset by them and as a prank uh his you know rest <laughs> in peace paul bearer his former manager they did a, a casket match or something and when he opened up the casket it was full of cucumbers oh, and the look of horror on his face <laughs> is real <laughs> Now imagine like the Undertaker's like six foot seven. People That's would amazing. chase would chase him around, holding a, a pick uh, a, a cucumber. That is the strangest thing. All right, and that's enough of the food corner with Chris and Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on our strange journey with us. So uh, what are we what are we listening to, Matt? Uh, so so today in in league with our uh, other VGM compatriots, we're doing uh, the second half of. The Wavebacks, uh, Masters of VGMs. Chris, you went first. You had some fantastic picks. By the way, I listened to the soundtrack to um, Journey to... Journey to Silius? Yes, yeah, Silius. That's how you say it. About ten times. Fantastic. It is so good. I'm like, I'm not even kidding you. I listened to it, and I was like, who didn't <laughs> tell me about this? Like, who was hiding this from me? It was so good. And then I found, um, so I was listening to it on YouTube while I was traveling. And of course, you know, you can't close your phone or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I found it on Spotify. There's a group uh, whose name escapes me at the moment. And they did kind of, they did a very like um, authentic redo of it. Oh, so good. Have you you played or are you familiar with the game Fester's Quest? Yes, of course. It's another uh, Naoki Kodaka jam. So I, I I remember being a kid and borrowing that from like the local video store, um, but I definitely don't remember. I could see like a screen in my head, but I don't remember that soundtrack. I'll definitely go listen to that because if it's you know Adam's family related, of course it's going to be dark. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I th- the, uh, I think the-, the Journey soundtrack is pretty dark too. In um what is it uh. Uh, uh, in the Discord for the Masters of VGM, uh, user Utopia Nemo called out um, the uh, what is it? The Overworld theme from Fester's Quest, which is almost what I picked uh-huh. for uh, for my other um, <coughs> Naoki Kodaka track. It's just that whole that soundtrack's great. That game's great. That's Naoki awesome. Kodaka's great. Sunsoft is great. Video games are great, and you're great. So let's listen to some music. Ah, oh, thanks, buddy. All right, so like I said, it's uh, these, it's it's my turn to make some picks. So, um, you know, you 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 said to me, or you said on the last episode, Mount Rushmore of composers, right? And I have a lot of uh, favorite music, and there's a lot of uh, composers that really kind of went through my head when picking um, my my four. Um, but it, w- it really stuck with me when you said Mount Rushmore, right? Like, who's gonna go on that now? Um, I, I, I'm, I put a little effort into this in the respect that I wanted to build up to like 
what I would maybe consider to be my number one. Um, but in no way is it really like, you know, uh, what's the word? A competition. You know, like I said, so many great composers that have, have um, you know, soundtracked my childhood and even my adulthood. So it's it's really tough to put really numbers to people. But I'm going to start with uh, Yuzo Koshiro, excuse me, uh, which should really, again, always be no surprise to anyone that's listened to the show. I prattle on and on and on about how much I love Act Razor. Um, but in in um, in getting the information together for this uh, particular episode, you know, I I I, tu- I found a few things um, that I didn't know, and I'll just pass them on to you. So some of the games that uh, Kashiro has worked on, obviously, you know, Act Razor again. Um, the uh, uh, Streets of Rage, right? Uh, there was something that really caught my eye. Uh, it was um, uh, uh, Shenmue. But of course, that's in collaboration with a bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just, you know, and, and at the risk of kind of being a jerk, a bunch of other games I've never heard of. But, you know, we'll, you know now that I have kind of this quote-unquote definitive list, you know, and, you know, nothing but free time to travel. I'm going to be listening to this stuff. But, of course, the Streets of Rage series as well. Another big... Especially Streets of Rage 1. Another great, great soundtrack. So, the first um, the first piece of music I picked was actually from a game that I'd never heard of. Um, I really wanted to kind of pick something that... Uh, again, uh, you know, I've never heard of. I'm, Chris, are you familiar with this game? I am not. The okay. first time I had ever heard of it was when I looked up the music (laughs) right so the game's called Misty Blue and um, it was for a a PC system you know on the other side of the globe Um, I I I read into it a bit I was very curious its graphics are gorgeous it's it was uh, this was uh, came out the same time uh, 1990 as as is uh, act razor so I was very interested you know in kind of hearing the two Soundtracks like okay, this is what you were doing for Act Razor, but what's this game Misty Blue? Because they're totally different games. In in Misty Blue, you play like uh, this musician who uh, is framed for a murder, and uh, they say that a lot of the game hinges on social interactions, and there's there's love interests and stuff like that. And if you look it up, uh, you'll see some, uh, in my opinion, some really gorgeous. Um, what do you call it? Pixel art uh, screens and the game itself. Um, the soundtrack is very interesting. Uh, it's kind of what I thought it would be, which, uh, at the risk of, um, maybe sound like I'm poo-pooing it a little bit. There's, there's elements of, like, Skinamax, and I'm just gonna leave it at that, right? But, um, I found the title track, Misty Blue, to be really interesting. So, that's what I'm gonna kick this episode off with. It's, uh, Misty Blue by uh, Yuzo Koshiro from a game entitled Misty Blue. Enjoy.
was Misty Blue by uh, Yuzo Koshiro. Uh, what'd you think? I thought it was freaking cool. I was just doing a little little head bop the whole time. Very, uh, you know, it sounds, this is going to sound weird to say, it sounds kind of like um, a modern take on 80s music. Like it sounds like someone modern trying to do 80s music, mm -hmm. but it's actually 80s music. <laughs> right. So that's that's what I really appreciated about this piece of this particular piece of music because I like a lot of like 80s synth music. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a huge Depeche Mode fan. Uh, Pet Shop Boys. I think this really fits with Pet Shop Boys. Like I feel like it almost to, to your point, it is almost someone covering the Pet Shop Boys. Not a particular song, just them. You know what I mean? Like yeah. someone's making a tribute track to them, and I love it. I think it's so good. Like once it once it breaks away and it gets into basically the verse and has that, dun, 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 you know, you could feel like those are supposed to be lyrics. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And uh, I just thought it was such a cool, cool track. Like it was again, really cool. I yeah. very much enjoyed and, that. Yeah, and the soundtrack itself is pretty pretty good too. There's a lot of really good songs. Some of them, some of them are deep, like five six minutes long too. I was very, I was uh, very surprised by some of it. Um, so yeah, if, if you dug that, I'd say go out there and check out the uh, Misty Blue soundtrack. Um, it's all available on, you know, YouTube. Various <laughs> spots on the internet. Yeah. No, I don't want to. I don't mean to promote one over the other. Uh, but that being said, I'm gonna move on to my second uh, second track from Kushiro. And I'm sorry, guys, but it's no surprise it comes from Act Razor. Uh, but this particular track comes from Act, Ra Act Razor Renaissance, which was the uh, the updated version that landed on a couple of new platforms, Switch included. Um, if I am, if I did my research correctly, this is actually a level that doesn't appear in the original Act Razor. Um, it only appears in Renaissance, and same with this piece of music. So I said, you know what? I've beaten that horse badly <laughs> and i think this is going to be me closing the book uh, book on act razor so for all you, until all you... we do an act razor renaissance episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe don't 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 threaten me with a good time uh but for now this this is going to be uh my parting song with act razor my parting song with um yuzo kashiro and my gift to you, air quotes gift. Uh, this track is called, and I'm, I'm going to apologize, Alcalone? Yeah. A-L-C-A-L-E-O-N-E. -E, uh, from Act Razor Renaissance. Enjoy.
All right, that was Al Cologne, maybe I don't know Al Al Capone. Al, it was Al Capone from Act Razor, Chicago. <laughs> um, <laughs> now uh, that's my final track from uh, Yuzu, uh, Yuzo Koshiro uh, from Act Razor Renaissance. And Chris, how do you feel about that? So that real, like, triumphant part toward the end, like, it just made me think of something you'd hear at the end of a Bill and Ted movie. (laughs) And I don't mean that Uh, as a bad thing. Yeah. (laughs) It's just like you got the big, like, triumphant trumpets and strings Mm -hmm. and, like, this crazy shredding guitar going over. And, like, this is the end of a Bill and Ted movie, and I love it. (laughs) Oh, I'm here for it. Absolutely. Also, I really Uh, like how it seems to call specifically back to, uh, uh, what the heck's that one song called? I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, but uh, it's the it's the act razor song. Uh, Fillmore. Fillmore. Yeah, it seems to call back to Fillmore. Like, yes. not just structurally speaking, but it seems like it's playing that exact riff at the end, which is, is pretty rad. And, and you know, if that was on not on purpose, I shouldn't say because of course it was on purpose. Someone created it. Uh, <laughs> you know, if it's there, that's great, man. Um, yeah, I I the, like. I kind of hate saying this because I think the word got very played out very quickly, but this song is just so f- epic. It is indeed. This it's is so, an epic song. It's so massive and so epic. And like, there's a, there's, um, there's that band, uh, Dragon Force, that, you know, it gives me these Dragon Force vibes because they mm-hmm. make these big, ep- sweeping, epic pieces of music with, you know, heavy synthesizers and, and really shreddy, noodly guitars and stuff like that. Um, and pretension, a lot of pretension, but uh, you know, I I had to I had to throw this out there because if you know I've I've done the whole soundtrack at this point, <laughs> this is the only thing that was missing, you know. So yeah, that was uh, that was my pick for my my two picks for uh, Kushiro. So he's the first uh, inscription on my quote unquote Mount Rushmore, which takes me to my my second pick. Uh, now I'm going to apologize. But uh, Takashi, Takashi Tateshi. Just every time I mess it up, just put that right in there. You got it. All right. Thank you. Um, So he was he's my next pick because, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, total package. One of the best soundtracks of all time is Mega Man 2. My opinion. I'm not going to fight anybody on it. Music is very uh, subjective. But um, that being said, Mega Man 2 is a game. I, I swear, I think Mega Man 2 was my first Nintendo cartridge ever. And I played the hell out of it. I wasn't good at it. I would always get to a certain point and I couldn't get further. And then as an adult with the legacy collections and stuff, I finally beat it. So woo me. Um, but that soundtrack is just so great. To me, very iconic, very classic. Um so, so I'm going to go with my first pick, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what I learned uh, about this particular composer. So, um, Mega Man 2, you're definitely going to hear a track from it, right? Uh, his work is pretty extensive. So, in, in doing so, uh, excuse me, I lied. His work is not extensive. That's actually part of the reason why I wanted to put him out here. Um, sure. A lot of the uh, other VGM podcasters are, you know, might uh, talk about, you know, composers who have these vast catalogs of music and, and you know, by all rights, go for it. You know, uh, this gentleman really doesn't have much to his credit. And it's his story is very interesting, too, as to why he doesn't. Um, I know I said I was going to play a track, but I think I'm just going to launch right into to what I learned. Um you know, he 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 was hired uh, by Capcom in '88, uh, and the first game he worked on was Mega Man 2. So, like, I mean, talk about T-ball home run, right? T-ball grand slam home run for the win. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I found interesting was that, according to what was written up about him, uh, while he was there at Capcom working on Mega Man 2, his desk was next to Manami Matsume, who did uh, the first Mega Man, right? Uh, so, you know, he would ask for advice. He, you know, how's this sound? Can you give me a little whatever? And then there's another bit of information I found interesting too. Uh, she helped compose the guitar solo in Airman stage. 
Um, unfortunately, we're not going to listen to Air Man stage. I chose something different, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, you know, he wanted to do Mega Man 3. No one offered it to him, which I think is kind of whatever. I don't know. Politics. But um, this this thing, I'm going to read it directly from the page because this actually hurts my heart. Uh, at Capcom, the development staff was often given disparaging aliases and uh, Tetsuyetsi, Tateshi, and Tate, and Tateshi was often credited as Ogeretsu Kun, which roughly translates to, quote, worthless person. And, like, when I read that, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Right? Like, that's so messed up. Um, right? And then it says, however, when he later worked for Konami, his nickname was a word of praise, which was just the opposite, but it doesn't say. So eventually he left Capcom, he went to Konami, and then at Konami, um, because Konami had such a like a hit factory he didn't really get to work on a lot of music and instead he kind of ended up going into the uh the clerical side of things he you know uh, booking appointments and being the go-between talent and so on so effectively he kind of was phased out of composing and and so on which is a shame um you know there's not like i said before there's not a ton of stuff to his um to his credit catalog wise and stuff but points of note obviously Mega Man 2 which I've been gushing over uh, US UN Squadron Batman Returns Batman the Anime Series for Game Boy Tiny Toon Adventures 2 um, with UN then, Squadron he actually only wrote this one song that we're gonna listen to yeah it's it's so weird right <laughs> I, I mean but UN Squadron is uh, UN Squadron rules <laughs> yeah I mean it sounds are so great so I mean even it's like you know shooting for the moon and you know falling amongst the stars so to speak um but then the few things that come after he's audio director producer sound effects so you know small small catalog but i mean massive footprint as far as i'm concerned yeah you so, can't argue the impact of uh, just no. Mega Man 2 alone is like seriously he actually <laughs> he was actually quoted as saying um something about Mega Man 2 well i'll, I'll say that i'll say that i'll save that for the Mega Man 2 thing so let's just dive right in uh, to his track, his his um, contribution to UN Squadron. This comes from the Super NES uh, version of UN Squadron. It's called uh, Fortri- uh, Forest Fortress. And uh, let's give it a listen. Forest Fortress from the Super Nintendo Classic <laughs> uh, UN Squadron. Um, Which we covered on our show back in May of 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want uh, you want the full, go back and check that out, man. That was a great episode. Three, three years ago. Goodness gracious. Man, time. Where's the time go? Right out the window. You ain't kidding. <laughs> so um, one of the things I love about this track, really, is... The drumming, all the percussion for this uh, for this song really sh- hits a chord with me. Uh, nah, what I nah. that <laughs> <laughs> so uh, real quick is it is it necessary to be punny as a host? Yes. Okay, because I feel it happening. Okay, 
So the snare, <laughs> so the snare that comes in those very first few hits are very tight. There's there's a little bit of um, like a, a tail to a little bit of reverb tail, but it's gated, which is very much you know the sound of the '80s, uh, according to you know studio lore. Um, what's his name? Phil Collins. Uh, "Quote unquote," discovered the sound when it came. To, uh, he said the, the engineer was talking to him uh, through uh, talkback, and he heard like this quick gated reverb, and he's like, "We need to figure that out." And that's how the drums for um, "In the Air Tonight" came to be, you know, gate uh, reverbed but gated, so it's very short. So that's what I hear here, and then to really play with the stereo sound of that drum fill at the beginning. You know, uh, there's a, there's a lot of great dynamic to it in there, where it's just drumming and like the bass line and everything, everything comes in, and it pulls out again. I think it's just brilliant, brilliant stuff. Like, I mean, testament to a great composer, personally. Yeah, and like, it's arguable. I I, I couldn't find any specific credits to this one. Um, he definitely composed the arcade version. He probably did the Super Nintendo one too, but mm -hmm. it is effectively the same song. Um, right. And so we went with the Super Nintendo one because that's the one that we liked better. <laughs> and it's but, our uh, show. And it's our show, dog doggone it. But even if he didn't <laughs> specifically do the Super NES version, the uh, pretty much everything we're saying also applies to the the arcade version. This is just a this is just a really cool song. Um, Absolutely. For a, a slower paced, more methodical stage in this game, mm -hmm. um, it, it it fits the stage that it was designed for so perfectly and. It's uh, that whole soundtrack is, is just marvelous. But this uh, really, this is just kind of it's kind of cool to see what else this guy was capable of. And it's it's mind numbing to me that his musical career didn't take off after Mega Man 2. Um, I don't I'm not personally offended that he didn't get to do Mega Man 3 because Mega Man 3 soundtrack is like my yeah. favorite in the series. Um, but at the same time, like. Man, this guy should have been doing all kinds of kinds of good stuff because even outside of the, the brilliance that is Mega Man Two, he clearly knew what he was doing when it came to writing music. So, yeah, it's it's a real shame that uh, you know he essentially kind of got shelved or put on a back burner somewhere, and you know he himself didn't really venture further into composing. But you know, like I said, it, it, it's a small catalog, but it's a heavy catalog. You know, yeah. real, real big footprint there. So. Uh, that being said, we're going to go to the the biggest mark, in my opinion, that he's left on, on the video game community, and that's the Mega Man 2 soundtrack. Um, you know, this is another one like Act Razor for me that I could listen to start to finish and then loop it back around again. I think this soundtrack is just fantastic. Again, like I said at the at the jump, it, it really is the sound of my childhood. There's a lot of stuff that I find myself humming randomly. Uh, anytime I hear that someone's got a cover, I will listen to it incessantly. I, I just, I can't get enough of the, the Mega Man 2 soundtrack. Um, and then therefore, by proxy, it's my favorite Mega Man. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, a, a massive franchise in unto itself. But uh, that being said, um, I wanted to do something that, like, I wanted to, I wanted to pick a song that I love that I don't know... Maybe it doesn't get enough shine. Maybe I just feel that way because I don't give it enough shine. Um, naturally, I would I I'll always lean to um, Flashman stage. I think to me that's Mega Man Two. I know Chris, you'll say Doctor Wily stage one, right? Yeah, I would think that's probably the most iconic song from the game, right? But you know those those two really get the shine. I wanted to give Quick Man stage a shine. I think this music is fantastic. I think... I think... You know what? I think I'm going to let you guys listen, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it a little bit. So, Mega Man 2, Quick Man Stage. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
that ending. Oh, there's so much great stuff to that song. Like, I love the percussions for it, real simple. But then there's like those ancillary percussions. Little zappy noises. I love that stuff. Like, it's so incredible how Mega Man 2 for the NES, right? Given the time, given the capabilities of the sound card and stuff, could really just be so deep and have these these layers to it, right? And still have textures at the same time, right? Those little zappy noises. They 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 have their own, uh, you know, feel. And then you get that lead synthesizer, which I was sitting here and, and trying to figure out how to explain it. And the best thing I come up with is for for a lot of the the soundtrack of Mega Man Two. The lead always sits out front, and yet it's not on top of everything. It kind of just sits in with the rest of the music. So it's this lead, but it's not uh, forceful, is the best way I could put it. And that's uh, really kind of how I feel about the whole soundtrack. Like, it's just, it's such a great accompaniment to a fun game. Yeah, I, well said. Um, this, uh, this song in particular is... It always kind of rubbed me the wrong way at first because I always found those little like little the little zappy noises kind of weird. But uh, I, you know, as I got older, and really just the more you go on with that stage, because this is the other thing like this stage. Right? <laughs> this is the instant death laser stage. Yep. This stage was the source of so much strife when playing this game for me. Uh, that I didn't, I didn't give this song uh, its due until a, a way later in life because you know the the zappy things kind of cheesed me off, and then the stage itself just made me want to throw my controller against the wall <laughs> so many times. And then Quick Man himself is is he's pretty tough. Quick Man's he's, rough, yeah. He is a he is a rough boss, especially when you touch him, which is yep. like that's the thing that. His quick boomerangs, like, yeah, throw them at me all day. But if he runs into you, it's like a quarter of your health. It's ridiculous. But this song is actually really, really quite good. Um, like, uh, like you said, the, uh, the the main melody isn't really... Um, it, it's... Uh, I, I'm losing the words for it, but it's a... Uh, it's it's not a very, like, obvious in-your-face kind of main melody, and it really right. does suit the stage. Like... Because on one hand, you do have to be like, you have to be really under control of what what you're doing. You have to be in just dead set control of everything that's happening. But at the same time, you got to move your butt because yeah. if you're not moving, ex- if you're not moving as quickly as you can to get past these lasers. You're dead. Those drop down screens. Yeah. Those. Just, oh. Oof. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I want to uh, mention uh, before I, I wrap up this little uh, chapter. Is that um, the uh, there was there's a there's a line in his uh, bio on um, video game music preservation, and it says, "quote He says that he doesn't mind how the music for, for the Mega Man series has changed from synth rock to techno, and sees it as a sign of the times." Now, I never really gave it much thought, the the kind of uh, trajectory of you know the Mega Man soundtracks, but <laughs> when I read synth rock to techno. It just further enforced the idea that, like, I'm really into synth rock. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Um, but, you know, I think I think it's worth noting because I think sometimes you and I have a tough time kind of putting our finger on what it is we want to say or what we're hearing or what we're feeling. So it's always nice to kind of get um, someone else's kind of take and go, that's exactly it. That's exactly what I was thinking. So uh, I felt worth mentioning. So, uh right i'm gonna i'm gonna not close the doors so to speak on uh on him and then we're gonna move on to my third choice so now i said before i'm, I'm building towards a crescendo and the next two tracks you know th- i guess tempo and thematically speaking might actually be the crescendo but um there was no way that i could build quote unquote Mount Rushmore and not have um not have this music represented. So my next pick, and I'm gonna butcher the name and I'm gonna apologize uh is gonna be uh Saito 
Terashima. Sounds good to me. Cool. All right. <laughs> I passed. Um. I mean, you passed my incredibly low bar. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Let's, let's not. Let's let's not refer to me as an expert on this. <laughs> Chris, as far as I'm concerned, low is still a class. <laughs> All right. So, um. In, in coming to the conclusion for Saito, right, I thought to myself, what are what are iconic video game tracks, right? Like, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of video game music? And apart from Mega Man 2 and really Act Razor, Castlevania always comes to mind. It's 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 a favorite franchise of mine, especially the the early NES games. And a lot of that music is just so iconic, right? It's another it's another kind of group of tracks that's kind of synonymous with my childhood. Um, I feel that some of it has potentially shaped what I listen to now. Um, and and so the first track I just went, I had to go with was, um, I mean, it, come on, it's Vampire Killer. <laughs> like, how could it not be? You know, uh, Castlevania, the original, like, you know, for <laughs> for for all its, like, difficulty and for all its throne controllers by me and i'm sure countless other video game fans um vampire killer is something that just will always stick out as i don't know quintessential video game music for at least me right uh and that's why she gets the spot on my mount rushmore of, of video game composer video game music composer so uh, I'm gonna less chat, more splat. Let's go video uh, Vampire Killer from Castlevania for Nintendo. I will never get tired of that track. Me neither, and specifically this version. No matter how many times this song gets reiterated or covered, mm -hmm. the original NES version will always be perfect to me. And that's why I chose the NES version. There's been massive amounts of wonderful covers, updates for Super Smash Brothers, you know, every Castlevania that's come out, you know, since and, and every iterate like but this version, this Nintendo version, is just sheer perfection. You know, that first part, iconic. And then that second half. The suspense to it. Like, it instant. I always see that first level, uh, you know, in the, in I guess, the ballroom hallway or whatever you want to call it. It's all white and... I will never not see that. Um, I don't know, man. This is just... This, to me, is iconic video game music, and I, I there's no two ways about it for me. Yeah, without a doubt. One of the things I really like about this in particular is that it's um, it's so quiet. The, yeah. Uh, when this song gets iterated on uh, and, and reprised in different games and, and covered, it's always so aggressive, and it works really well as a super awesome, fast-paced, aggressive song. But this version is so, it's got a, a quiet intensity to it. It's really, really quite remarkable mm -hmm. um, that it manages to be as invigorating as it is, but also quiet enough to be spooky. It's it's reserved in all of the best ways. Uh, I, and this, this entire soundtrack is a masterpiece for sure. But this song in particular is really, really, really special. Absolutely. Uh, just to take a moment... Um... I'll just rattle off a few of her other um, 
uh, soundtrack, uh, I don't know, accomplishments, really? They have her as, uh, she did the Goonies, you know, Goonies Never Die. Uh, Vampire Killer, the game. Uh, Goonies 2, Russian Attack. Uh, some Simon's Quest in collaboration. Castlevania in collaboration. Um, Stinger yeah, Vampire Life. Vampire Killer is a really wild one because it's the same soundtrack, but it's right. MSX. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and a similar, but ultimately very different game. D if I'm not mistaken, did we not do a comparison episode? I don't know. I don't think we did. I think we just did Castlevania and we talked a lot about Vampire Killer. <laughs> Okay. Then. But I might be crazy. I might be remembering it wrong. I mean, 150 plus episodes, you tend to forget. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I just keep thinking about hot dogs. Damn it. I'm really excited about lunch. Damn it, I want hot dogs now. <laughs> I have a foreman grill, too. Anyway, anyway, anyway. This is Did way you off a hot topic. dog in an air fryer? It's a good time. Sorry. What? Back to Seriously, they come out really well. Air fryer. Huh. Not, not as good as a grill, but... You no, know, nothing's better than a grill. Slap it in an air fryer, you're good to go. Slap it in an air fryer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, and then, now for my next pick. I'm a huge uh, Simon's Quest fan, right? I love the concept of it. You know, it's kind of the, the Vania portion of the Metroidvania, right? Just over here processing ribs all the time. <laughs> yeah, I had ribs last night. I was like, how did he know what I had for dinner? Holy cow. Um, right. <laughs> Man, I was doing so well. And you mentioned ribs. All right. Anyway. Ducking near mountain cliffs, being carried away by tornadoes. <laughs> so I personally think there's a lot of great stuff on the Simon's Quest Um uh, soundtrack and if i'm not mistaken we we did do a full episode right we did, yeah uh but this is mount rushmore this this is this needs to be reiterated i guess maybe for those in the back who didn't hear us the first time i if if you haven't heard this right i i don't know where you've been maybe you're new and i'll, I'll give you a pass but if you're not new and you haven't heard this i i don't i don't know what to tell you man bloody tears like this song is another one that's been, you know, remixed, redone, faithfully redone, not so faithfully redone, you know, all kinds of covers all over the place, right? But again, I will always come back to the original, right? I've, I've heard shredding metal versions. I've heard, you know, DJ remixes and stuff, and they're all fantastic. But this original version, um, this one, this one makes my heart go pitter patter. So. Uh, in the immortal words of Letter Kenny, Pitter Patter, here is Bloody Tears from Simon's Quest. To answer your question, this one we did do a comparison episode on. This was okay. episode 65 where we compared the Famicom disk system and the NES version. This was the NES version, which is technically not the original, but there also doesn't seem to be any indication that uh, the same composer did not do this mu music on the NES right. and Famicom disk systems. Disk systems. 
Well, I was a poor white boy in America who never even knew what a Famicom system is, so this is the original to me. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> that being said, that there's just so much great about this track, right? Like, it's such a simple, like a simple loop, but there's so much going on. Like, what I love is just that pipe organ intro, and then once it kicks over to the dum 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 dum, you know, and that that kick and snare just get going. It's good. It's such a such a high energy. Um, then it trails off again, and it just gives you that that pipe organ bit. So you get this um, this ebb and flow, this up and down of, of dynamic with it. I mean, I love I love dynamic in music, and I, and I love artists composers whomever who really play with it and really elicit from its listener you know emotional responses visceral responses this this is one of those tracks that does it for me uh, simon's quest to me is a game that you know it plays very differently from its predecessor right it's, it's almost like they took a hard left at the at the creation table but 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 for the best possible reasons right um and I feel like Simon's Quest is just so much harder. And and this music, for me, gives me that uh, emotional... Uh, what's the word? Like, that emotional cape to wear to wrap around it. You know, the game's tough. Uh, you know, you gotta roam around. The music's there to give you a sense of uh, urgency, a sense of mystery, a sense of dread, which is always great, especially in games like this. Uh... I, I just couldn't be more elated um, with this track and then to be able to put it out, you know, in my quote unquote Mount Rushmore to put it to put it in front of people one more time. is just always great. Yeah, this is a. Um, I, I this is probably my favorite song in this game, besides maybe the, the town theme, which oh, what's the name? The Silence of Daylight. Yep. That's the name of that song. Um, it was. Yeah, I'm gonna <clears> tell you, it was. A, it was a coin flip for me. Really, I almost did the Silence of Daylight too, because that's another iconic piece of music. Yeah, just really phenomenal stuff all around. Um, this song is. Uh, it's. It's weird that you said pipe organ because I never. It never occurred to me that that beginning was supposed to be pipe organ until I played Castlevania Dracula X on Super mm -hmm. Nintendo. And it was a pipe organ playing that I was like, oh, that is, that's, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this whole song is, is awesome. I, I feel like the first Castlevania is personally harder to me. Okay. Whereas, uh, Simon's Quest is just more obtuse. Uh, I'll agree. You know, the, the translation is, is bad in ways that yeah. genuinely get in your way. Um, yeah. But it's a, it is a, it is a classic game. It's fun to go through, especially now where you can, you know, you have the internet to help you out with your, with what you're doing. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful track, uh, and this composer, very much, Seto Terashima, very much deserves the, uh, the v VGM Master of VGM title, <laughs> the moniker. Indeed. Yeah. There was, there was no way I thought, uh, you know, she was gonna, she wasn't escaping me. <laughs> um, so that being said, I uh, will come to my final choice. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I, I've, I always feel like someone of this caliber gets the introduction of um, my next person needs no introduction. Right? Well, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> right, I'm gonna. Yeah, right. I, you know, call it, call it a, a softball toss lob. You know what I mean? An underhanded pitch for the Grand Slam. Call it, uh, you know, what you will. But let's just call a spade a spade. Koji Kondo has got to be... If you're, if you're of a certain age, let's say that. If you're of a certain age, right? Koji Kondo created essentially the soundtrack for your childhood. Period. Exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Question mark? <laughs> Semicolon. So that being said, ellipses. <laughs> parenthetical. Um, Koji Kondu, his credits, you know, just it it, it reads it, it really reads like a who's who or a what's what of you know when you think of video games, I think 
when when people think of pop culture and video games, right? These uh, all these franchises come to mind. And my man's my man's been at the helm composing, right? So that means that soundtrack's been there just as long as that game's been there and they're just so intrinsically tied together, right? You know, we're talking about Super Mario Brothers, we're talking about Legend of Zelda, right? And then even little oddball games, right? Sound effects for Star Fox, right? Um, what's another one that caught me way off guard? Punch Out. Yeah, right? he did the arcade. He did the arcade version of Punch Out, including adapting the uh, theme to the Gillette boxing TV show into the main theme of the game, which was then reprised on the NES version of Punch Out, which is so wild to me. Right, like. That's such a random little thing, right? But it's, I mean, it's there, right? So, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about him, right? Like, his music speaks for itself. His his catalog speaks for itself, right? But here I am on a podcast and I have to talk about him. So. Um, my first pick was going to be, or excuse me, is going to be, uh, the Koopa Kid battle from Mario Brothers 3. I mean, you know, I grappled a lot with what I was going to pick because obviously Mario, very iconic. I wanted to do the under one, the one, two theme, din in it, in it, right? Because that to me is my favorite song from, from the Mario Brothers franchise. There's just something just so great about like those 12 notes or whatever it is, right? Uh, and as a bass player, I don't know why I never bothered to learn how to play it. So that's something I got to rectify. Um, but that being said, I chose the the Koopa Kid battle because I felt like it one it it's, it it certainly speaks to my musical sensibilities. But to that aside, it's just a uh, just a fantastic track, and it it also reminds me a lot again of my childhood and you know going up against the kids and just being like what the hell <laughs> and making sure no one heard me because i was a kid and i shouldn't have said hell mm-hmm. uh but um yeah i'm i'm gonna shut up now i'm gonna press play in about 10 seconds as i introduce the uh koopa kids battle from super mario brothers 3 so you guys enjoy it I appreciate about that track is that the lead is definitely not out front and it's almost set back. Um psychologically I'm not entirely sure what that does to me as a as a gamer. I think because the abrasive part is up front it gives you that kind of uh sense of urgency, you know, that comes with boss fights. Yeah. Or or in this case mini boss fights. Um but to know or to to be able to take a step back and listen and hear that that melody kind of set back, I feel as though and, and I haven't played Mario Brothers three in probably twenty years. I My feel goodness. like if I Yeah. I know. I don't have a ton of time and so there's a lot of games that I, I would love to go back and play that I've already played, but I'm not going to, just I just don't have the time. But I feel like if I played it and I I was playing, uh, you know, a boss fight, something would click inside of me. And you had mentioned before about a different track, keeping calm. So, you know, as a kid, you might not pick up on it. Or maybe you do. I'm not sure. And then that's what keeps you from kind of freaking out, especially if you're like my childhood friend who had a lot of anxiety, you know, when there was timers on the screen, like, you know, running out of the... Uh, off the planet from metroid as it was gonna explode he's like here you do it um so if you're you know if you're an anxious person maybe you won't hear that that uh that counter melody or that that lead melody or whatsoever but uh but the fact that it's there is absolutely brilliant to to kind of counteract that abrasiveness up front 
Yes, uh, it is definitely a bit of an abrasive tune, a lot of it having to do with the instrument choices, which in this game, uh, this game sounds so wonderful on the NES. Um, mm -hmm. This is one of those games I think is so perfectly suited to the system it was created for. Um, Super Mario All-Stars is such a cool thing where they did these crazy 16-bit versions of the Mario games, and of course Mario 1's always going to look iconic, but I love the way it looks in 16-bit. I think Super Mario 2 translated to 16-bit gloriously. Mario 3 is so distinctly NES in both visuals and sound. When they try to make it look fancier with fancy backgrounds and stuff, it always looks and sounds wrong to me. Um, this this game was just so designed to be the, the pinnacle of what you could do with an NES. And this music is is so emblematic of that. This this tune is a boss song. It is so much fun because mm -hmm. it's it's really cool. Um, it's so much more intense than most of what uh, the rest of Mario 3 has to offer. But it's also like it really hits you with that cool factor. It's a really fun and cool song. Um, Cause that's what Mario 3 is. It's cool and fun. It's just ma ma masterful choice there, sir. Wonderful <laughs> pick. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So, actually, do do we want to just slip in that one little quick one? I do. All right. A little quickie for you, right? So, I was originally going to pick the theme from Punch-Out! Because uh, growing up, I loved Punch-Out! I was terrible at it. But I loved. I still love Punch-Out! I love Super Punch-Out! even more. Um, but that's not why we're here. Uh, but I was informed that that was not written by Koji Kondo, but instead someone else. Um, but all the little jingles that play before you get into the fight, so when they introduce your opponent, those were all written by Kondo. One of my favorite, all-time favorite uh, jingles is uh, uh, Don Flamenco. I think mm. it is just perfect. Uh, it's all of like... 10 seconds and it's just 10 seconds of perfection so i'm just gonna drop it real quick right here and here it goes fight like that hypes me up so big and so bad for this game like i want to go play it now right what is that what is that classical tune though it's a it's a classical piece it's like I, uh it's like a, it's part of the 1812 overture maybe i can't remember so to your point, it's it's based on uh, March of Toreadors. Um, I mean, that that little bit brings me so much joy. That eight second track brings me so much joy. I had to throw it out there. Just kind of an honorable mention. Speaking of honorable mentions, um, you know, I did have quite a few different uh, uh, composers that that came to mind when this came up. But again, I wanted to go with the idea of Mount Rushmore. So. Um, that Bobby Prince the Third, who did all the Doom stuff, Wolfenstein, Duke Nukem. Um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank. I had a whole list of people that I was. Oh, I mean, I have such a a huge open heart for um for Graveyard Keeper. I think that soundtrack is fantastic from start to finish. One of my all time favorite soundtracks too. Um, Stardew Valley has a great soundtrack. Uh, the Gears of War series, the entire franchise, gorgeous music. Um, you know, to everyone that's worked on those games, like I, my hats off to you. It's just great, great stuff. Um, I just had to honorable mention some of those uh, games and names. Um, but without further ado, this brings us to the final track. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm playing Breath of the Wild. I don't know if it's because I think this is potentially the most iconic piece of music next to Mario 1-1. Um, I don't know if it's because I have such a soft spot in my heart for adventure games. But the theme song to The Legend of Zelda will always be in my top three most favorite pieces of music ever written. To hear orchestral um, versions of this song give me goosebumps and almost bring me to like tears of joy uh i can't i can't gush about this piece of music enough but it's really the original nintendo version that to me has so much depth and so much emotion in it and it's crazy because it's it's just the nes sound card right like how 
How is it possible? I mean, right. this is theoretically the uh, theory. I, I don't believe it is myself, but it's theoretically even the lesser version of it because it was composed for the disc system with that extra sound channel. I personally prefer the NES version. I'm, um, I'm right with you. Absolutely. It's, it's why I chose the NES version. I, I can't, I can't talk about this enough. I can't listen to it enough. Right. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shut up as I know I should always do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let everyone bask in this glory, and when we come out the other side, we're gonna be better for it. <laughs> uh, that uh, all jokes aside, this is the title theme to The Legend of Zelda for NES by the immortal Koji Kondo. Enjoy. <laughs> opening notes right before the song really picks up and kicks in and gives you like the full frontal legend of zelda experience those opening notes to me sing a song of such sorrow right and even in that sorrow there's hope which to me is the very essence of the legend of zelda franchise every pretty much every game that i've ever played right the game always starts with Link behind the eight ball. Ganon's already there. The princess is dot dot dot. You have nothing to your name but your tunic, right? And now you have to rise up from the bottom and fight your way to the top. And those opening notes to me embody the franchise bar none, without question. Those like five seconds in my opinion, are some of the most brilliant five seconds in video game music history. And I'm sure that, you know, I sound like I'm making a really bold statement, and it's because I am. I love the Legend of Zelda theme song. Just, if I had two hearts, I would love it with two hearts. If I had one heart, I'd love it with one heart. You know what I mean? I love it that much. Um, and then once it just picks up, and you get that kind of triumphant gallop in pacing and every everything come all the music all the instruments come along for the ride and they build this just beautiful sweeping like that song i i remember reading or or watching i don't remember an interview with the game's creator and he had said you know i came up with the concept for this game just being a kid and walking around and thinking that everything was an adventure right and i'm a big i like hiking and I love the idea, I love this feeling you get when you kind of get to the precipice of either a plateau or a peak or something. And you kind of come out of the tree line and you just see the natural wonder that is where you are. This song to me is that, like these big sweeping meadows and, you know, the, the towers of Castle Hyrule and the dungeons of, you know, everywhere you go, everything you encounter. It's Maybe it's because I'm currently... Excuse me. Maybe it's because I'm currently playing Breath of the Wild and that game is just massive and it's gorgeous. It, it's got its own art type and it, it just is gorgeous. Sweeping, sweeping vistas. You know what I mean? Um, 
this song just embodies everything about the Legend of Zelda franchise. Like everybody that's come after the original game, like it, it just you know nailed it with gameplay and everything. I just I I can't say enough. Chris, take over. I'm babbling. Um, I, I, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. yeah. <laughs> no, this song is a flipping masterpiece. It's there's nothing quite like the feeling I had the first time I turned this game on. And, you know, the first song I heard from Legend of Zelda was the dungeon theme, because uh, my sister was playing it with somebody. I was like, what is that? But man, the first time I played this game, I turned this on. It's got that waterfall and the mountains and the the Triforce glowing. And this, they, you, you, you summed it up perfectly. They, those first notes that the trilling flute or whatever that is that that's supposed to be coming out of the nes is so perfect and i think that's honestly what sets this apart for me from the famicom disc system version where it it sounds so much more video gaming gamey on the disc system mm -hmm. and this sounds otherworldly this sounds just exactly what it should be it's so mysterious it's so um enthralling like just pu putting you out into this adventure and it's 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 a brilliant brilliant work and there's a reason it's one of the most enduring songs in all of video games like this tune's still around man and just like the super mario brothers theme also by kondo that's yeah it's... you you don't get any more iconic really yeah. than those two just nailed it yeah so that's it for me man those are that's my mount rushmore like i said there was a lot of honorable mentions just so much fantastic video game music um just out there and it's it's been a joy and it's been a pleasure I, i'm so glad a we were invited and b we took the we we accepted the invite to do this it's been it's been fantastic and i look forward to um really listening to what everyone else out in the vgm uh podcasting community has come up with chris and i were chatting beforehand and uh you know, there seems to be some overlap and some 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 differences. So that's that's always my favorite thing is, you know, of course, we can all agree on great stuff, but it's those deep cuts that you don't catch. Yeah. You know, I was, I was gushing over a uh, journey to say a seal. Silas. Silius. Silius. Journey to Silius. I should probably learn to say the name of the game if I really love it as much as I do. Um, and to me, that's a deep cut that I never would have listened to. I never would have checked out. And it's quickly become a favorite of mine. So. Well, I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed your picks, Matt. I think you did a I think you did a bang up job. Oh, thank you. And uh, yes, again, Masters of VGM. This was a, a a really cool project to be a part of, and a really cool project to uh, end. Let's say season one on. <laughs> <laughs> 152 episodes. <laughs> eh, we'll call it a day on season one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we do have some some news to to to. A break to everybody we are going to be taking the summer off uh our recording schedule simply no longer works now that my kids are in school there's just there's no way for us to reasonably record this podcast until uh my kids go back to school so uh it's my fault blame me but uh, uh wave back no, is no no is going away for a couple months so don't worry we are coming back we are 100 percent gonna come absolutely. back absolutely absolutely uh, in fact, we just spent a stupid amount of time talking about yet another project <laughs> before, uh, before we recorded this. But um, that is going to be our show. That's a wrap on episode 152. Uh, join us next time after our hiatus for our season two premiere. <laughs> uh, we are finally going to get to our listener submitted episodes. We've got two listener submitted episodes back to back, um, which are very ex I'm pretty excited about. Um mm -hmm. Uh, we've got uh, our listener Rob Metzger has compiled compiled a list of uh, the best shooter music, mm. and um, then after that, my friend Rich wants to do an episode um, of. I actually forget the theme of his now. It's been so long since he asked to do it. I think we were supposed to do it originally back in March, and I was like, he thought I just forgot about. it. I was like, no, dude, you're you're, you're on the schedule. Just our schedule got all rocked yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, so please uh, bear with us. Uh, go back and li listen to the other Masters of VGM. There's so many other VGM podcasts yes. out there now. Yes. And we were having this conversation. I went and looked, and as far as I can tell, we are one of the oldest VGM podcasts. Um, 
which is, I, I guess, is a neat feather in my cap. Um, I can't find too many that are older than us, uh, but there's now, there's just, the, the internet's lousy with video game music podcasts, so give, so, give some other folks uh, some love and attention while we're away, and we'll be back around September. See so... you in September. <laughs> So, I'll never sing again, I promise. Mr. Matt, do you yes, have sir. a song for us to, to close out the episode with? Uh, no. <laughs> so, I... I, I, I well, like the sound of silence. No, no. <laughs> Not I, the Simon and Garfunkel one, either. There you go. Now, I would just vote for the ending from Mario 3. I think it's pretty good. Uh, you know, that was actually, like... For Super Mario 3, I had about three or four songs that I was going I was rotating through and the ending was one of them so yes I have a song for the ending <laughs> uh, no I think that's a fantastic track to go out on um, outstanding great cool well uh, here are our regular closing spiel we here at the Waveback Podcast are incredibly grateful to everyone who listens and we love communicating with you when we can we have a couple of ways you can do that there's the Geek Aid Discord channel in which we have a Waveback chat where we frequently discuss all manner of stuff relating to video game music and whatever our next episodes are going to be we also have a Waveback forum page on Facebook which you can find by searching Waveback on Facebook of course you can always still send us an email at mail at and while you're at it check out all our other social media channels which you should totally follow like and subscribe to if you haven't already and be sure to check out all the other great content we have on our site over at dk.com uh matt do you have anything to plug before we go honestly i don't um i will say that uh i'm gonna miss you guys during the break uh but definitely you know stay in touch with us during during the break during the discord we're always available i say it all the time i love chatting with everyone uh it's 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 a, a not so guilty pleasure of mine um so let's let's keep talking there and um i think i think when we come back um we'll come back stronger and and, uh it's gonna be a lot of fun we're gonna take the time to rest up recharge the batteries make sure the kids are taken care of and having fun and um i'll be listening to plenty of video game music on my own and like i said when we come back we might have a we might have a new project that'll yeah. to, to do. Maybe maybe we won't. We don't know what the, what oh, the future well, is, but you know, I don't want to promise well, anything. Well, but well, 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 well. feel feel pretty good about things. <laughs> Either way, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Here is the uh, the ending theme from Super Mario Brothers three, and we'll catch you in a couple of months. Have a great summer. Later.